What's up guys? So I want to do a quick vehicle overview and show you all the equipment that I keep in my truck on a daily basis. So I'm going to show you the truck right okay, now. So here's the truck right here. You can see I have my um, brand and phone number. So here's the equipment that I have currently right now. Um, so we keep the pressure washer in the truck. So we don't take this out of the truck. Mind you, it's kind of messy right now. I haven't had time to really clean things up. So I'm just going to go over each piece of equipment. So this right here is our 4.2 GPM machine, 4,400 PSI. This is going to be the one I recommend to you guys to upgrade to. This one cost me about 800 bucks. I got it on sale at, uh, not Northern Tool, but I can't think of the name right now. But when I think of it, I will definitely put it in the uh, description of this video. So we have this pressure washer. Now, one of the reasons beyond just it being more GPM that you want to upgrade is that these pressure washers are way more reliable than the ones you'll buy from Lowe's for like 300 bucks. Now, mind you, in the first section, I said start off with those. Yes, do that, make some money. If you cannot start off with this, with making an investment of this much for like a pressure washer like this, then start off with one that costs you 300. But take that money and quickly reinvest it into a better, more reliable machine. Reliability is everything in this business. This is not gonna cut off on you. Um, it's built to be used a lot. It's a commercial grade pressure washer. So this is where I'm at right now. I'm completely satisfied. I absolutely love this pressure washer. Now a lot of people, you'll see different kinds of uh, setups. Some people do trailer setups. Some people do, do mounted pressure washers. Some people do soft wash systems. I personally like going to pressure washer and obviously it's not mounted. I can take this out if I wanted to. So I have this in here. I keep two gas cans. I have my wand right there, which I need to get a shorter one as well. On here, you're gonna see this gauge. So you're gonna to wanna to get a gauge for your pressure washer so you can see how much PSI you're using, right? That way you know you should, for a house wash, you should only be using a thousand or less. If you're using 3000 PSI to do a house wash, you're not doing things right. And another feature I like about this pressure washer is you can turn the pressure up and down. So the next thing that I really love and that I would definitely recommend you get, guys, regardless of what kind of pressure washer you have, is a hose reel. This hose reel is a life saver, guys. This one also is not mounted, but it has this rubber uh, rubber bottom so it can stay in place. Um, and the reel fits 150 feet of hose. So there's 100 feet of hose on here, and I have an additional 50 feet of hose. For the average house you do, 150 feet of hose is gonna be plenty to get you around the house without having to take the pressure washer out. These type of things are time savers. So quick connects. All this pressure washer, all my equipment is quick connect. So we're not screwing anything on and off, we're just quick connecting it. 150 feet of hose. So 100 feet is on here, 100 feet isn't because this one only fits 100 feet. 100 feet. So along with that, I keep oil in the truck to when I change the oil in the pressure washer because you definitely wanna maintain these things. I keep my... Uh, bucket where I have my basically I have my phone applicator now basically this top is also the same pretty much device that's used as an X jet so your other method if you don't want to do this method personally I'm doing this one because I like this method right but you can downstream you can X jet which an X jet is basically this piece right here but instead of these individual bottles say you would fill this whole five gallon bucket up you would have a longer tube and basically you would have it you would carry it around with you um, and it actually would connect, let me show you guys, sorry about that. It actually would connect at the end of this gun right here. So just like this device, you would quick connect it right there. An extra jet, instead of having a bottle, you're going to have a long tube that's connected. That's going to be in basically this bucket full of your solution, sodium hypochlorite and your surfactant, right? Also keep a couple of these spray bottles in case there's some spots you want to quickly knock out with bleach um instead of worrying about applicating you can quickly spray it so usually anything on one you know the one on a one level you can quickly reach i have some extra guns over here i have my small surface cleaner great for steps and sidewalks and if you don't want to use the big one i have also have my big boy right here i love this one time saver now also have this metal extension this comes in handy sometimes and I have a big extension pole, which I rarely ever use, to be completely honest with you. That's the main things I keep in the truck, along with 200 feet of uh, garden hose. You can see that right over there. And my solution. I don't carry a water tank. I don't carry, yeah, I don't carry a water tank. Also keep oxalic acid in the car and a pump sprayer. You're going to want those things. And I keep a few tools. 
um, in case you didn't do anything with the pressure washer. Now, along with that, I have my nozzles right here. This is a second story nozzle, so a straight shot. Now, when you get these nozzles, you want to be paying attention to the orifice, right? That's how wide, or basically the circumference right there. You want to make sure that you have the right size orifice for your pressure washing tip. This is a 4,500 PSI pressure washer. So one thing you may not know is that every tip, just because it might say the same um, angle tip, right? So this is a zero degree, right? But just because it's a zero degree tip does not mean that it has the same size orifice. The orifice could be smaller than this. Now, when you're working with certain pressure washers, the tip has to be built for basically the amount of pressure that come out of here. So if you have a smaller pressure washer and you have a second story nozzle, and the orifice is only built for 3000 PSI, um, it can damage your pressure washer and cause less efficiency. So you wanna make sure you have the right sizes. So this one right here is a, let me see if I can find it on here. Uh, I think it came off, it's a zero degree. I, oh, here we go. So this one is a, I don't know if you can see that. I think it's a zero 75 kind of scratched up the second one I have is a 40 75 so this is a 40 degree angle but the orifice is bigger than most uh, of those white tips that come with pressure washers these are pretty much the only two I use um, mainly because I only need your yeah, water angle or a straight shot I really don't carry any other ones I have another one it's a 25 degree angle but I rarely ever use it so guys this is like the equipment that I currently have and I say, if you have the money, definitely start off with equipment of this caliber. Oh yeah, and I also didn't mention this. I have my ladder right there. It looks small, but it gets up about to, I think it's up to 18 feet. Decent size, pretty much perfect for what I do. Now, if you're running your pressure washing business and you're doing uh, cleaning roofs or cleaning out gutters, which I definitely uh, recommend. If you wanna make more money, offer those services. I personally don't because we just stay so busy with house washes that it's not really something I'm into right now. But definitely, guys, if you're willing to do it, climb ladders and stuff like that, buy you bigger ladders, install a ladder rack on top of your, of your vehicle, and, you know, make that extra money. Um, but those are my main pieces of equipment. And I'm going to show you one last thing I keep in here. So let me come over here. So I don't have it. I don't, actually don't have any more. I can show you the package. So we keep shower caps in here. These are clear plastic shower caps. And what we do with those shower caps is we use them to cover electrical outlets on the times um, where those covers, where those electrical outlets aren't covering a home. So we're not, we're not spraying water into them and damaging someone's electric supply. So keep those shower caps as well. They're scrunchy, so they're perfect for just popping them on and popping them off. And it will save you obviously insurance liability because you're not damaging someone's water outlet. So guys, I hope you um, enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was helpful. Um, hopefully you have more of an idea of now of, you know, what you need. Like this right here, this basic setup is a 15K a month business. So this is all you need. And altogether, this equipment is probably, I would say this is probably $1,500 worth of equipment. This being your biggest expense of about $800. The big surface cleaner about $350. So that's roughly like $1,100 right there. This um, hose reel will run you about 150, but it's, it'll be the best investment you've made. And then buy yourself about 150 feet of hose, which will probably run you another 150 to 200 bucks to get 150 feet of hose. Um, you have your, obviously your gauge, that's 20 bucks. But this is pretty much all you need guys to get started. Your garden hose, 100 feet, that's gonna run you 50 bucks. But not much at all guys. And as I talk about in other lessons, there's ways you can finance this or get this equipment without coming um, out of pocket or, you know, or breaking the bank. So guys, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next lecture.